I knew Corey um, prior when I had, when I was drafted in Minnesota. We were both from Ohio. Um, he was a, such an exceptional person. Uh, it just it was a it was a travesty what he went through uh, toward his you know toward you know the last hours uh, of his life. But um, he left behind a, a beautiful wife, a beautiful child, and I have nothing but the highest regards for Corey. I knew Corey for about two and a half years. Um, he really helped me in my transition um, from being drafted uh, to the Vikings. It's hard because a lot, of, a lot of times when young men are thrusted into the NFL, they don't know really who to trust, but Corey's had such an, such an open arm relationship with me and really invited me into his home, and I can't thank him enough for that. A lot of people don't think Minnesota's really hot um, any, any, anytime you get into training camp in July, it's going to be hot anywhere. Um, but what the confusing thing is, when you go to Mankato State where they have training camp, there's a lot of pine trees. And the pine trees engulf all that humidity and that heat on that field. And I remember it was the second week of training camp. And a lot of guys sometimes after the first practice, because the first practice is usually the hardest. They try to get the padded practice out of the way. So the afternoon practice, they go no pads. And you really get out of that, that, that sweltering heat. And a lot of guys get a, a lot of work after practice. If you run gassers, um, and as we talked about, gassers are like down and back, halfway, from, you know, halfway down the field, halfway back. So I was trying to get some extra conditioning in. And Corey had some trouble with his weight um, when he played in the NFL. Um, he was a big man, very versatile, can move for his size, but they always wanted him to always be conditioned. And when I was halfway through my extra conditioning after practice, I saw Corey drop to a knee. And as a football player, you don't really think about that. Like, oh, okay, he's taking a break or whatever. And the next thing you know, the whole medical staff was around him. So it was a very alarming sight um, because a lot of the guys had left and you kind of want to go there and ask, but you don't want to really want to ask and you know, get in that whole situation. Um, but it led to you know, the end result at one in the morning uh, where we lost Corey, and that was a very traumatic time in my life. Based on what you've learned about the polar breeze machine, what do you think about it? What, what, what are the pluses? Are there any minuses? Give, give us an idea. Well, I think it's a huge plus. Um, it's unfortunate that we had to lose a man for us to develop this type of technology for our athletes nowadays. I think the Polar Breeze, what it does from an athlete's perspective is that it gives you grat instant gratification. And when I say that, a lot of times when you're playing football, you're playing baseball and you come off and it's really, really hot, people just want to throw like ice towels on you and they want to shock your body. I don't necessarily feel that's beneficial for the athlete. I think what the athlete needs to do is comfortably relax. And I think that's what the polar breeze does because you don't know what's going to happen. If I come out for a series and all of a sudden the offense turns the ball over, I have to go back in five seconds. But what the polar breeze just did for me was give me that instant gratification of letting me cool my body down, but not to the point where it shocks my body where I don't know where I'm at. And I don't like that when I played, I don't. I wouldn't necessarily uh, advertise that as a coach either because you want your athletes in tip top shape ready to go. But the Polar Breeze, it gives you a nice relaxing, soothing, cooling feeling so that if you have to go back in any instant notice, you can go back out there and perform. Good. Uh, typically back then, uh, or even today, do they use misting fans or cooling chairs uh, to cool? Or, or... But yeah, that all reminds me of amusement parks. <laughs> and if I, if I, I mean, those misting fans, you, you know, you'd be lucky to, you know, go down that one aisle and all of a sudden get like a little mist. But um, I don't feel that it's, it, it, it really doesn't hold its weight up to the, uh, up to the polar breeze. Um, it gives you a little bit of relief, but it doesn't give you that instant gratification as I mentioned before. Had Corey been around when there was, or what, polar breeze been around when Corey had his problem. Do you feel, especially if he was on the sideline getting rehabbed, so that he, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, do you feel that this could have possibly prevented him from even getting into that heat stroke range if his body core temperature would have been maintained at a normal? 
every human being is developed a certain way in their life. I cannot say, yes, it would have saved his life, but I know that it could have prevented a lot where he, wouldn't have, where he would not have had to go to the hospital and do a lot of extraneous manu uh, mannerisms to get him to stay alive. Could it have helped? Could it have been preventive? I feel so. Could it have saved his life? I don't know. I am not God. But at the same token though, with the way technology's come, compared to about 15 years ago when I played, this is a, such a more advanced way to treat athletes. Very good. Would you recommend this machine to an athletic director, registered trainer, football coach, or any other coach where there's strenuous athletic exercise involved? I would 100% recommend this, and actually I would recommend this as my bedfellow too. So I'm a, I'm a huge proponent for the uh, polar breeze. I think the way technology has influenced sports in the last 10 years, an instrument like this would have helped prolong my career by another four to five years. Um, the, the, the biggest problem for an athlete is always what? Recovery. Recovery to get back on the field. Always trying to replenish yourself to get back on the field. And I think that the Polar Breeze would have been an instrument to add, along with other devices, to help myself recover and get back that much faster in the field and perform that much better.